what's up everybody welcome back to my channel how are you today my name's Jamie and I'm from urban Zoomania here today we're going to be talking about the molting season and to me this is the most difficult aspect of caring for a cockatiel and it has a lot of fine details that we need to go over so you guys will be well on your way to taking great care of your birds okay let's get right into it not know you might be wondering what is molting and actually molting is the shedding or replacing of old feathers with new feathers um, and they're growing all at the same time since simultaneously um, why is molting important you ask a healthy cockatiel will molt from two to three times per year and each time that they do molt, it takes about eight weeks, which can be over two months whenever you add it all up at a time. And this is really important because it overall equates to six months out of the entire year. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, and during this time, they are more sensitive. So there are some changes in their care that you normally you're doing that needs to be changed to meet the needs and requirements while they're molting. How can you tell when your cockatiel is molting? And during this process, um, extreme feather growth is happening, so you should see a lot of feathers at the bottom of the cage. And these feathers can look like normal feathers like you see here that are really long, like her tail feathers and her wing feathers. And other feathers that you may be noticing also look like um, stuffing from a pillow, I'd say. Like they're very fluffy. Those are like the underlying feathers that are underneath those big feathers. So you'll see a bunch of that at the bottom of the cage, which is a good indicator. You also can be able to tell if they're molting, um, if your bird looks more scruffy right now or their feathers are looking very rough or unorganized. As you can see, like, she is almost done with her molting season, but she still has some, like, little feathers underneath here and around her neck that are out of place. And that's a good indicator that she's going through a molt. There are also pin feathers that oftentimes go underneath their head. And they look like little pins or little parts of a shoelace and those are actually what the new feathers are encased in. They're called feather shields and they're really important because they protect the new feathers and fun fact they're also made of keratin which is what our hair and our nails are made out of. The last way to tell if your cockatiel is molting or not is if your cockatiel's behavior has changed or they're becoming more irritable than normal. Yeah, irritable, I said. Um, whenever their birds are molting, it can be a little bit painful. And it's kind of like for a human, whenever you're growing new teeth when you were little, or whenever you shave and it's growing back and it's just kind of painful and annoying. That stubble you get. <laughs> Girls, you know what I'm talking about, it's relatable. Guys on their face, that must be terrible. Um, but yeah, they're very uncomfortable during these times and it is like growing pains. It's just part of life and it's very painful. So they also like squawk whenever they pick out their feathers. So they'll be in their cage, everything will be quiet, you'll think that they're sleeping or something. Then you just hear, ah! <laughs> and they just squawk out of normal. It's very cute. Isn't that right? Oh, she's on my lap. Here you go. I'll set the toy down for her.
Some more changes in behavior that you might see during the molting season could be they're screaming more than usual during the time. I know a lot of times, like whenever I call somebody and she's all irritable, she has to be in her cage during the molting season, she will just squawk non-stop and my family really thinks that she does that all the time, but she doesn't. It's literally every time I have a phone call. Anyways, first world problems. Also, some more changes in behavior you might see is um, they might crave less attention than they normally are craving, which is completely normal, don't worry about it. Often cases are sometimes they crave more attention than normal too. There is just a bunch of um, irritability going on and you're going to see changes in their behavior. The most important things to focus on I would suggest is nutrition and their rest periods. Uh, to begin with nutrition, a balanced diet will allow them to grow new and healthy feathers. Okay, They're all growing new feathers, they need all the nutrition that will support that, that growth. I've had birds in the past where I really did not know about the nutrition as well as I should have and you could definitely tell that they were struggling to grow feathers. So it's been a learning experience for me and with more research I definitely have seen an improvement based off my care with Tuna because she is a baby and this is her first, she's going on her first year. So her feathers have been great quality I've noticed. I'm really excited to see how much better they get whenever I feed her more more varied diet. Some vitamin A foods that they recommend feeding cockatiels include sweet potatoes. Ah! Okay. Sweet potatoes, carrots, and pavlano peppers. She loves peppers. I eat peppers a lot so I love getting peppers. Um, also, you should make sure that your cockatiel has access to calcium. And you can give this to them in many different forms. Um, the first being is a cuddle bone. You can actually give them the bone inside of a cuttlefish. And that's just hung on the side of the cage and they eat that over time. And it helps them. You can also get cuddle bone made into a perch. I have one of these. I will show you later in the video. You also can give them calcium in forms of fresh vegetables. Um, there's high amounts of calcium in spinach and broccoli that you can give to birds. And you can also crush up eggshells and give them this in small quantities for some calcium. Ooh, you're so cute. She's really being patient. She doesn't want me to scratch her, but she is enjoying being a part of the conversation. <laughs> you're so cute. You are so, so cute. I really love her guys, I, I swear I'm always talking to her. <laughs> My friends think I'm like talking to them, I'm like no, I was talking to Tuna, sorry. <laughs> okay, the next thing about nutrition that I really want to emphasize is that you need to make sure that they're getting the proper amounts of vitamin D and that this comes from sunlight. So. Um, you need to be making sure that they get sunlight every day. This helps with the absorption of calcium, which is critical for feather development, right? So I suggest getting them every time it's sunny, you know, go outside with your bird if you have that opportunity on a screened in patio or if your bird's wings are clipped. It's really important for them to get some kind of sunlight. But every time they are in sunlight, make sure that you supervise them. I really do not recommend putting your bird in direct sunlight and make sure that they're not getting too hot or harmed. I live in Florida, so this isn't that much of an issue, but for some of you guys that live in some northern climates, this might be a little bit more difficult. Okay guys, this is the brand of pellets that I use. It's the Labor's Premium Daily Diet for Cockatiels. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you open this, I love it because it lasts enough 
um, for about, I would say, two to three months for her. And it doesn't go bad, so that's also why the quantity is so great. But look at the... Yeah, see? She loves, she's like wanting to eat it. She sees what I'm doing. Pacing back and forth. <laughs> You want to make sure that your cockatiel is eating every day is a seed diet. Just very minimum. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be at least 10% of their diet. So for me to make sure that Tuna's getting this, what I actually give her is I actually give Tuna the Labber's cockatiel pelleted balls. And they're actually very nice because they have pellets as well in them, not only just seeds. This way, shes I don't have to worry too much about overfeeding the seeds, you know? So I give her about four to five bird balls a day with her breakfast. And I don't have to worry about her over-consuming them. She also can hold one in one foot, so it's like a very good mental stimulation for her. It takes her a long time to break it apart and actually eat it, and she has a great time doing it. I'll try to put a clip of this in the video too as well. So I want to talk to you guys how to incorporate all of these um, complicated nutrition requirements that they have into your daily routine just so that it becomes more second nature and you can ensure that they're actually getting what they need every day without overcomplicating it. And what I do is I actually make breakfast together for her. So in the morning while I'm making my morning coffee and my breakfast, I get her breakfast ready in her own little bowl and I have everything already prepared. Guys, this makes your life so much easier. I cannot even explain. So I am making my breakfast and I give it to her, right? But I also have a day once a week where I meal prep for my own food because I don't like cooking all the time. I find that I never get to eat enough if I don't meal prep ahead. You got me? So say I wanted hard-boiled eggs for the week or I wanted sweet potato. I did that earlier this week and I also made extra and did it a little differently without salt, without peppers, so I could give it to her and have it pre-made throughout the week. And putting everything really close by in the fridge right where you can see it and having it in its own little separate Tupperware container and, or even portioning it out so you know exactly how much to give every day is makes caring for these guys so much easier and really helps. So let's talk about naps. During the molting season, cockatiels take a lot of naps. And because of this, it's important that they are in their cage and they feel really secure for good portions of the day. This does not mean that they have to be in the cage all of the time, but I would recommend not going over two hours a day out of the cage, just during molting season. I would also try to separate the time all throughout the day so they have many times to decompress and take naps throughout the day. I incorporate this by getting her out after breakfast every morning for at least 15 to 30 minutes. She's able to stretch her wings and get sunlight whenever it's really high in the day. And then later in the day, I get her out whenever it's convenient at 30 minute intervals. All right guys, the next topic I really wanna emphasize is cleaning. Cleaning, 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 okay? And it's really important to clean the bottom of the cage a lot during this time. 
why you ask because there's so many feathers on the floor there's d dirt from them spitting their food everywhere there's poop and cockatiels are ground foragers so they are going to be spending a lot of their time on the floor and picking at the floor so my bird actually throws her um, Labber's bird balls on the floor and eats them off of there. I'll show you guys a little clip if I can. I think she almost prefers to do this. <laughs> it's crazy. But molting also produces a lot of dust and debris that's really unhealthy for you to breathe in and for your bird to keep breathing in if it just sits there for a long time. So I try to clean this cage. Um, the bottom and replace the newspaper and whatever's lining the bottom of the cage about every two to three days during the molting season. It does seem like a lot, but personally I have been struggling really hard with cockroaches just because my apartment complex is infested. But also it just, it seems to be the only option because it gets so messy and that's only one cockatiel guys. They are really hard to take care of. So the next thing I want to talk about in cleaning is every morning I have to replace the water bowl and her pellets bowl that stays in there all the time. And this is because it's usually soiled by the next day. And whenever you're giving them water, you want to make sure that it's either spring water or purified water because birds are more sensitive to chlorine and heavy metals. You may be disappointed that molting season is a lot and it takes about six months out of the year for your cockatiel, but don't be too disappointed yet because I promise you it's a great opportunity for you to develop a better relationship with your bird. You are not allowed to eat that, miss. Miss, those are my fancy plants. Those are my fancy plants. Sorry, you can't have them. You can't have those. Those are for you. She's so pretty. She gets really, really focused during molting season, guys. Like, if she's on a plant that I don't want her on, it's really hard to get her off because she's just like too focused and doesn't want to be bothered. No, miss. You can't. You can't have it. Go do something else. More fun. She doesn't like the camera. She's like, what? Get that camera out of my face. So sorry if that video was kind of long, guys, but molting is just a really complicated topic. I wanted to fit in as many details as I could for you guys. Molting, um, molting is a really taxing but very necessary process for these growing birds. And if we educate ourselves, molting can actually help us humans become better keepers of these animals. You guys can use molting season as actually an indicator of a bigger, more severe health problem. If something's wrong, you can indicate, it can indicate that you need to contact your avian vet. An example of this is if your cockatiel is molting too often, or if they're not molting at all, if they have bald spots happening. Um, it also, if you start to research molting more and understand molting, you can notice your bird's normal behavior and compare it whenever they're not acting normal. So this will really help you um, find out if there's a problem and most of the times be the line of life and death for these little creatures. Molting also makes us aware of how our own behavior and our own lifestyle influences those around you. I don't know about you, but based off caring for my cockatiel, it has made me overall a healthier person and 
adapt a healthier lifestyle. And guys, there's a lot of helpful information out there online. I would love to share a couple of links that helped me make this video and some that I thought were extremely detailed and had a lot of necessary information. And I highly recommend that you guys go and do your own research out there because a lot of things, the things I'm talking about that are characteristics of molting vary from bird to bird. So it is good to do your own research so you can understand your bird even better. I've been taking care of birds for over eight years now and I swear every new molting season I learn something different. Something is always changing about these birds and that means that I always have to change with them as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I really hope that this helped you. If you have any comments, concerns, questions, literally contact me. I love talking about birds and I'll let you guys know anything that I think and I would also love for you to put your experiences in the comments because I would love if the comments section actually becomes a place where all us cockatiel keepers can share our knowledge and connect and communicate. That would be really ideal and I'm really excited to talk to you guys and meet you all. Okay, have a great day and I'll see you guys next time.